I think there may be someone at home. Let's visit that house. Hello, sir. We've come to Forever Mountain in hope of peering into the wildlands, that we might have some sort of idea where we are going. I am pleased to meet you. My name is Tycho Northpaw. Tell us about yourself. How did you come to live here on the edge of the wildlands? I was born a member of the dog tribe and raised to be a hunter. However, that career was cut short. You see, I suffer from hay fever, which not only renders my sense of smell useless, but on the hunt, my sneezing had a tendency to alert the prey to our presence. I soon became quite a liability to the hunting party. I'm terribly sorry. That must have been quite difficult for you. Not really. True, the other members of the tribe soon ostracized me, but I was never much of a hunter anyway. My heart just wasn't in it. I was much more interested in the stars. I would lie on my back night after night and watch them into the early hours of the morning. I charted their progress across the sky and studied them until I knew each and every one by heart. So I decided to become an astronomer. What led you to Forever Mountain? The king of the dog tribe at the time, Rex, had no use for astronomy. He considered it a waste of time. All he cared about was the hunt. So after I was ostracized, I decided to find the highest mountain I could from which to gaze at the stars. And that was here, Forever Mountain. What did you find when you first arrived here? I found this building. Just this building? Nothing more? Oh, yes. There were many other things. What kind of things? Instruments for seeing the stars. Light catchers, I call them. I believe they were actually left here by the humans before they ascended. What makes you think they were left by humans? The items I found are far beyond our own technology. And you actually believe all of these humans ascended to the land of the clouds? Actually, I believe the humans ascended to the moon. What? The image we see on the moon? That is actually the face of a human. I believe they carved it there so we would know that they are always looking down on us, watching us and caring for us. Someday they will return. And when will that be? When we are good enough, when we have learned enough, when we have stopped fighting amongst ourselves and learned to live in peace. Only then will we be worthy. I find that hard to believe. Then what do you believe in, my young friend? I... I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Ah. That's all very interesting, of course, but there are a few other things we'd like to discuss. You seem to have an excellent view up here. Have you had occasion to do much observation of the wildlands? Indeed I have. In fact, I have made maps of part of them. Indeed. Most interesting. I am both an astronomer and cartologist. Cartologist? A map maker. Our new friend is a map maker. Perhaps you could tell us something about the Wildlands. I will tell you what I know of the Wildlands. It is a place of great danger. It is also a place of great magnificence. There are hostile tribes, treacherous terrain, and roaming reptiles. It is also a land of great beauty and power. It sounds like a truly wondrous place. I could just as easily be describing the known lands. But it sounds very different. In some ways, the wild lands are very different from the known lands. In some ways, they are very similar. Have you ever been to the wild lands yourself? I have not. With my <coughs> impaired sense of smell, I am at somewhat of a disadvantage in the wilds. 
I do, however, occasionally encounter a traveler who has been through the Wildlands, and he will supply me with information. Many fear the Wildlands and say they are full of unspeakable dangers. That is only fear of the unknown. If you make the unknown known, the fear has nowhere to take root. Can you give us any suggestions for our journey? Keep all of your senses on alert, especially your common sense. You will need them. How much of the wild lands can be seen from this mountain? That is hard to say. I cannot see as much as I used to when I had my light catcher. However, no one I have met has ever reached the other side and returned to tell their story. Yes, the Wildlands are a fascinating place, but there are some other things to discuss. How did you come to make these maps? From my vantage point here on the mountain, I would look through my light catcher to the Wildlands below. I saw the hills and the valleys. If I saw an area of thick vegetation, I knew there must be water nearby. If it was a round, contained area, it was a lake. If it was a long, extended area, it was a river or stream. If at night I saw a fire, I assumed it must either be a campfire or a village. The size of the fire and the consistency of its occurrence told me which. You mentioned something called a light catcher. What is that? Ah, my light catcher. It is an instrument I found in this house. It makes objects that are far away seem close at hand. It makes the stars seem so close you could reach up and touch them. It makes the moon look as if it were right next door. What a wonderful apparatus. May we see it? I will show it to you, but I'm afraid the instrument itself is broken. About eight moons ago, I had it on my desk. A strong wind blew through my window, blowing papers to the floor and taking my light catcher with it. Part of it shattered, and it has not worked since. It still pains me to think about it. What part broke? This small, round, clear part. It cracked in half. And you've been unable to repair it? I am afraid so. That is most unfortunate. Such an instrument would help us greatly on our quest. There are a few other things we'd like to discuss. Go on. Since we cannot see very far into the wildlands, perhaps you would lend us the use of your map. I'm afraid that is impossible. It is the only map I have of the wildlands. And with my light catcher now broken, I would never be able to make another one. It must not leave these walls. But without it, we will lose much time trying to find our way into the Wildlands. I sympathize with you, but there is nothing that would persuade me to give up my possession of the map. Would you trade the map for a repaired light catcher? What are you saying? I'm saying that I know who can repair the piece from your light catcher. If you allow us to use your map to go into the Wildlands, I will see to it that your light catcher is repaired. Do we have a bargain? I will make you a counter proposal. While you are getting the piece from my light catcher repaired, I will make you a duplicate of my map. It will be ready by the time you return. Fair enough? Fair enough. If you wrap the piece of the light catcher so it may be transported safely, we shall be on our way. My friends, the broken piece is now in your care. We'll be on our way. Good luck to you.
Good day. May I show you some of my glass items? No, thank you. Actually, I have a glass item to show you. We need to have this repaired or have a duplicate made. Can you do it? These are most unusual. From whence did these pieces come? An instrument called a light catcher. This is new to me. To construct a piece to these exact specifications is beyond my skill. Then we are doomed. Not so fast. Let us go to the lodge. We can ask Sokka. If she cannot help us, perhaps she will consult the one who knows all. What is this lodge you speak of? The lodge is our gathering place. It is the place where we share information and ideas of how to build things better. How many are there of you at this lodge? Sometimes 20, sometimes 30. 23. We gather there every day before sundown. In fact, the meeting should be starting very shortly. Who is Saka? Saka is our chief builder and the head of our association. And she will know how to repair the glass? If she doesn't, she will have the best chance of finding someone or something who can. Who is the one who knows all? The one who knows all speaks to us. He tells us how to build things and answers our questions. However, we do not understand most of what he says. Where can we find him? The one who knows all is not in the body. He speaks to us through unit. Please go on. Perhaps I've said too much already. I would prefer to let Saka explain. Then we shall most gratefully meet with you and the others at the lodge. And since there is a large head and a small head on the same hammer, you won't have to carry as many tools. Friends, may I have your attention? These travelers have come to us with a most perplexing problem. Indeed. How may we be of help? I am in possession of a most unusual piece of glass. However, it is broken and I must either get it repaired or have a new one made. This piece of glass is warped. I cannot clearly see through it. It is part of a wondrous apparatus called a light catcher. It makes objects that are far away look very near. That is quite amazing. Perhaps you could consult the one who knows all. What do you know of the one who knows all? Only that you turn to him when all else fails. Please, can you not consult him now? It is a matter of life and death. Very well. We will show the glass to Unit and... Wait! Only a member of our guild may speak with the one. Then he shall be an honorary member. The rest of us had to pass a test to prove our worthiness. Tradition must be upheld. Yes, I say we give him our test. That's right. Even a mere honorary member must pass our test. Test! Test! test. test. Test! What is this test you speak of? It is a test of your cleverness. If you pass, I will consult on your behalf. If you fail, you must look elsewhere for your solution. This is based on an ancient drawing made by the humans. You must arrange the pieces in their proper place within the frame. Each piece must fit perfectly. They cannot overlap. Do this, and you will prove your worth. Then bring on your test. Very well. Bring on the tanagram.
Hey, Fox, would you like a hint? Riff, I hereby grant you honorary membership in the ancient and honorable order of tinkerers, fabricators, and... All right, let's get on with it. Here is Unit. Have you ever seen such a marvel? I cannot be sure, but I believe that is an orb. Could it be the Orb of Storms? Not if they've had it as long as they say they have. It must be another orb. We sometimes refer to it as the Orb of Hands. This little ball knows everything? If we ask the question properly, he will give us answers. Oh, one who knows all, we need your help. These travelers have come many miles to ask you a question. Speak to them and give them the benefit of your vast knowledge. Unit functioning. Input query. What? That means you may ask your question. Oh, one who knows all, I bow to you. Correct. What? Bending of torso at waist and lowering until perpendicular with standing surface, returning to original position, correctly identified as bow. I told you we don't always understand him. We were wondering if you could identify these. Composition of object, amorphous inorganic mixture of silicates formed by a fusion of silica and oxides of boron, with potassium as a flux and lime as a stabilizer. But what does it do? Objects do nothing. They are inanimate. Can you tell us how to make another? State origin of glass. It is part of an instrument called a light catcher. Term light catcher unknown. Further information required. It uh, brings things far away, near. Insufficient information. It goes inside of a tube. Insufficient information. What more information does Little Ball need? Unit requires proper identification of glass apparatus, or alternate name for instrument of origin. All I know is it's from a light catcher. There is no reference in memory files to the term light catcher. Hmm, so much for the one who knows all. Perhaps light catcher is not the proper name. You could be right. If the apparatus is as old as you say it is, the one may know it by a different name. Then there must be a record of it. Those records would be ancient. Where would they be? If anyone has records going back that far, it would be the rats. Who are you? Who are you? I'm the doorkeeper. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I Who are you? I said I'm the doorkeeper. Who are you? I may need a disguise.
Anything more I can do for you? We must find out what this confounded thing is before we continue. It is like no glass I have ever seen, but the pieces fit together to form a circle. So I see. I have seen something like this before, when I was young. I was sent to study ruins believed left by the humans. Where is that book? The sign out front read observatory and contained the most wondrous things. One of them was a huge round tube with glass of differing thickness throughout it. Was it a light catcher? Not exactly. From what I understood, it was more of a light bender. But it made the stars seem close enough to touch. Ah, I remember. It was called a telescope and the piece of glass called a lens. I will return to the orb and see if it recognizes tele tele scope, telescope and lens. I am in your debt, Francis. I can get it when I leave. Who are you? Who are you? I'm the doorkeeper. Who are you? Who are you? I said I'm the doorkeeper. Who are you? Who are you? It's late. I think we'd better go. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Tell us about the lens. Accessing, correct. Item is a lens with a refractive index of 1.52. Lens conforms to formula 1 over F times quantity N minus 1 times quantity 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2, where N is the refractive index of the glass, R1 the radius, F is focal point, and R2 the radius of the second surface. Can you tell us how to make another? State origin of glass. Telescope. It's a lens from a telescope. Theoretically possible to make if specifications followed exactly. Glassmaster, can you do it? I'll do what I can. Very well, unit. Suppose you and I get to work. Glassmaster, what news have you? Have you been successful? Well, yes and no. I like the first part best. I was able to construct the lens from the instructions given by Yuna. However, it is still too rough. Yuna says I need polishing rouge to polish the lens to its proper smoothness. 
but I have none. Is there anything we can use as a substitute? Not to my knowledge. I am unfamiliar with the use of rouge. Tell me, Glassmaster, what is your opinion? Perhaps I can try a harsher polish on the lens. It may help it, but it may also ruin it beyond repair. What are the chances for success? Slim, very slim. Friend Sokka, what is your opinion? Perhaps there is a substitute we can use for polishing rouge. But we're not even sure what polishing rouge is. We certainly don't know what to substitute for it. Perhaps the one who knows all can tell us. Yeah, excuse me, Orb. Unit functioning. Unit, we have no polishing rouge. Is there anything we can substitute for it? Qualities and properties of rouge can only be duplicated by soil composed solely of red clay, which is ground into the finest powder. Clay must be pure and free of any chunks. Any imperfection in the substance will result in damage to glass. Then we may be doomed. I know of no clay. And where can we find this pure red clay? Location unknown. Unknown? Pockets are known to exist in this area, but exact locations are unknown. Glassmaster, any ideas? Fine red clay. I wouldn't know where to find it. Sokka, do you know where the clay might be? I have no idea. Ia, can you think of any place for red clay? No, I can't. I can't remember red clay anywhere we've been. Neither can I, except in the Boar King's mud bath. What? Yes, that's what the Boar King uses to make his special mud. Finely ground red clay. Do you mean that I was up to my waist in red clay and didn't even know it? No, no. What will you do now? The last time we saw the Boar King, we barely escaped with our lives. We dare not try it again. What will you do? The only thing we can do. Well, if it isn't the little thief again. I wonder what he wants this time. <laughs> well, I see our presence here is not appreciated. We shall have to take our truffle news elsewhere. Wait! Truffle news? That's right. In our journey, a field rich with truffles was found by the eagle nose of our friend Ock. Eagle nose? Whatever. We thought that we would share this news with the Boar King. After all, there are more than enough truffles in this field to provide everyone in the castle with a sumptuous repast. A lot of truffles? Oh yes, a whole field full of them. But with the reception we've received, I don't think I care to share that information. Oh, you must forgive me. I've had a very bad day. I'm sure the king will want to hear of this immediately. Very well. Open the gate. Go ahead, Riff. Your Majesty, it is the Fox Riff. He requests an audience with you. A fox? He just doesn't learn, does he? Very well. 
Send him in. It will amuse me. Your Majesty. Tempting fate, my young foolish friend. Why are you here? I was going to come in here and beg for mercy. I was going to plead for clemency. I was going to grovel at your feet and appeal to you for the release of my friend. I was going to strip myself of every vestige of dignity I have left for your pleasure. But now, I don't think I'm going to. Did I miss something? This is excellent, exactly what unit requested. So this is the lens. It's beautiful. I wonder if these guys are handy around the house. Perhaps this excellent craftsman will provide a solution to our problems. Hello, sir. Ah, it's you. I was beginning to think I'd never see you again. That thought crossed our minds several times as well. Well, did you do it? Did you fix my light catcher? That I did, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. How I've longed to see my beloved horizon. The stars, the moon. Oh, how can I ever thank you? by fulfilling your part of the bargain. Yes, we want the map. Of course, of course, it's right here. In fact, I've only now finished it. A traveler was through a couple of days ago. He was from the north and was on his way back there. He gave me a great deal of information, which I've included on this map. How fortunate. Yes, in fact, he was quite forthcoming with his information. For a raccoon. A raccoon? That's right, a big fellow too. I told him about your quest and he was quite interested in it. That's when he started giving me all the information. Tycho, can you remember which additions you made from the raccoon's information? Why, yes I can. Kindly remove them from the map. This information I do not trust. The trail is warmer than we thought. It's ready. We've not a moment to waste. Let us be off. Very well then. We have the map, fresh provisions, and a noble purpose. What more could we possibly ask for? Mud! I promise that upon the completion of our mission, you shall swim in the sod to your heart's content. Now then, let us be off. Wait, you are Riff, are you not? Of that I plead guilty. Who are you? I am servant to Alara, High Priestess of the Orb of Storms. She has sent me here with a most solemn request. If it is within my power to help Ilara, I shall gladly do so. News has reached her that you are bound for the Wildlands. She asks that you deliver this letter to her sister, Ilama. Ilara has a sister in the Wildlands? Yes. 
Alama was always the adventurer of the two, quite a loner. When she was quite young, she chose to live in seclusion in the wild lands. They have not seen each other in many years. But how shall I find her? We do not know. Perhaps she will have to find you. At any rate, if you can find her, Alara would be most grateful. I am happy to be of service. Tell Ilara I will try to make the delivery. Let us make haste, fellows. Our quarry beckons, and we must answer. 